hello there and welcome to this tutorial and today we are going to use or apply parabuild steel detailing software to create or improve this simple 2d truss line work you can see clearly on the screen here number one we are going to insert the actual steel profiles to to the bottom code and the top code and also the internal diagonals here so we'll get started right away if, if I switch back to Parabuild modeling. Remember, Parabuild has two sections, modeling section and annotation section. So under uh, modeling section, there are other sections here. We have tools, macro, connections, holes and cuts, others, plates, profile and context modeling where we get the grid line, how we create the grid line right there. So that one will come later on after taking you briefly on this. So we have our trust already in line work. So we want to improve this so that it, ha it has a professional look or we want to detail it further. So it, ha it has all the information so that, so that when you submit this to the workshop, we get rid of unnecessary questions on, on, on how how long is this what is this profile so let me just uh, start improving this uh, the simple line work in autocad with the parabuild tools now let me go straight to profile section and click on that button there so the moment you click on that button there you will go straight to steel catalog inside here you will be able to get variety of steel profiles so let me just uh, go to built up section there you can able to see variety if you switch back to that uh, radio button there you can see those sections under it you can see that one you can see that if i come to c sections we have variety you we have up we have uap name it so if you come to call from we have all those so let me go straight because i want to work with hollow sections so i'll come to hollow section and go straight to square hollow sections here so for my top code and bottom code, I'm going to use 80 by 80 uh, by 4 millimeter thick. So I'll scroll down and try look for that and I'll, I'll get it right there. So the moment you select on it, you have two options at the bottom end here. If you have your lines in place, if you have uh, option one, just to click on the line to create that profile or, or, or option two to identify two points to define where you are you want your comp your profile to start and end so let me just uh, select on this because i have everything defined for me so i'll just uh, click on that line then right click to effect that command so my profile already uh, in place so let me go ahead and uh, place another one in, in the opposite direction though it's very simple you can mirror this using basic commands available in autocad so let me just go back and re repeat the same command by right clicking and coming to that command so i'll come back to hollow section and repeat or use the same profile so we have it here i'll go ahead and click online mo uh, model line i'll select on that then select on that line then right click on my keyboard so you realize the moment you right click you'll be prompted with this small dialog box where where you can be able to uh add more details or change this profile if you you, you, are, you don't want you, you don't want to apply it so to if you don't if you want to change this you can come to profile section here and click this drop down arrow here so inside here you can change this profile or if you don't want to use uh, square hollow section you can click this uh radio button under other so the moment you click on this you'll go back to profile catalog where you can be able to change to a different profile catalog so that's it i'll close that I'll, I'll close this or click ok then close this so my top and bottom code will be the same so i'll come right click once again and apply the same here by clicking on that and i'll snap or, or select on that right click to apply that command so the only the, there's also another way you can change the positions of your uh, profile so i'll go ahead and change that if you want to change you just click this review buttons and the uh, uh, the steel profile will change the position according to the position you tend to take it to so i'll stick with this mid position and go ahead and click uh, click close now i'm going straight to the internal diagonals here so on, on the internal diagonals i want to use a different profile steel profile but still square hollow section so i'll go back on profile section and click 
on the shape there. So I'll switch back to hollow section and scroll up under square hollow section, scroll up up to 50 by 50 by 4 millimeter thick. I'll select on that and click on line. So I'll select everything I want to change here like that, right click and it will be applied. Click OK and right click once again and select and unselect hollow section. Click OK and select these two and right click to apply all those. So I'll do the same thing this far end, right click and come to hollow section, click mo online mod uh, on, on model line right there. Select on that, then select everything right there, right click and apply that. Close that. Right click once again to repeat the same command and uh, apply that by selecting all that. So we want to connect these components. We want to connect the internal diagonals and top and the bottom cord. So we'll use a very simple tool, just a cutting. That's holes and cutting tool. So on the apex here, I want to create a miter joint here by coming to this tool miter joint. Select on that and I want to miter this joint. Create a miter joint right there. So I want also to connect this uh, internal, uh, internal diagonal to the top cords. So I'll come here and connect this and this. Right click and click on that. I'll create a connection right there. Right click and come to the same same command. Select this two, uh, these two components. Right click and click the main component right there. I'll right click and repeat the same command and do the same thing here. Right click and select on that. Right click once again and repeat the same command and do that. So I'll repeat the same thing. It's very simple. I select these two commands and pick the main component. Right click once again and repeat that all the way through. Select all these. And select on this as, as the main component. Select on that. I select this, this and that. Then pick on that. So let's move on the opposite direction by right clicking and repeating the same command. I'll select these two, these three. Right click and pick on this as the main one. So let me connect that to that and select on that. Right click. Remember, if you miss the process and the connection will be something weird and select on that. Right click. And let me try and show you if I select a different as, a, as, as, as the main component. So let, let's select this and this and this. Then right click and select on that. So you see how this how the connection is created. So let me just press undo so that we get back where you are and create something that looks better. So I'll come back to this connection and I'll select all these three steel members. I'll right click and select on the on that as the main component. So I'll repeat the same thing here. That and select on that. It's not a very hectic process. Parabills are, is a very user friendly and it should not scare you the moment you see these many, many tools. It's very, it's approachable and user friendly and easy to use in simple terms. Now, let me just select this and a, a, a connection has been created. And if you come there, we've created that. Let's connect that to that. So this is a very simple truss. On the columns, we'll use uh, the universal beams uh, where this bottom, co uh, uh, bottom cord will connect Will, will will be will be connected to to the beam and the top cord and the top cord will link up uh, with the with the couplet of our universal beam so that one I'll come back later on and and explain that so our key point is just to create or improve your your line work in AutoCAD using parabuild steel shading software so We've created all this. So someone might might be willing to know what are the sections have you used? What are the names? So to indicate this, you just switch back to Parabuild Output. So inside Parabuild Output, you can also you the number one thing you want to add, or if you don't want to add these dimensions, or if you want to identify where to indicate where to where to place these diagonals. First of all, you need to uh, place your dimensions. So under dimensions, just come to this section. Remember in Parabuild Output, we have dimensions, annotations, and sheets where you create or, uh, or bring in your title block. So let me first of all create dimensions here and pick on aligned dimension. So I'll pick on that. So I want a dimension from this far end. So let me just press F3 on my keyboard just to enable the snap. So I'll, I'll snap on that spot 
and move all the way to this far end here so it's not really straight so let me just terminate that and right click and repeat this uh, this once again this one again i'll terminate it right there and uh, bring it right there so i'll pull it up slightly there and i want to place um, in, um, i'm indicating where to connect all these uh, internal diagonals the moment this drawing has been submitted to to the workshop for fabrication so let me just indicate this roughly uh, uh, briefly and quick and snap on that spot and snap another one right there right click always right click to repeat your immediate command zoom out and bring it there so let me just place the general dimension here by tummy uh, by snapping on that spot moving all the way to this far end here and start it from um, from that spot so i'll terminate it somewhere here somewhere there and add some little information here by double clicking on this text and uh, just uh take it it uh, take your cursor to the far end then i want to just in case uh, place some brief information here so this will be setting out points setting out points i need uh, uh this should be caps setting out points points so i'll include that one right there so we have the information right there so i'll come at the bottom end here and do the same thing i'll add some dimensions here so i'll start all the way from this far end and move all the way to this far end i'll bring it right there that will be okay right click and repeat that command start all the way from that spot and drag all the way to this particular point and bring it somewhere there right click and repeat your previous command and stretch all, all the way to this far end and bring it somewhere there repeat it once again and we want to place all these dimensions accurately and i'll place another one right there right click so i'll go ahead and right click once again and uh, apply this dimension right there perfect so let me place a general and overall dimension from that f from that far end to this far end here drag it out and play this place somewhere there and also in uh, indicate some dimensions uh, some information here let me just add that uh, just uh, put that information right there setting out points points right there so i have that in place just to show that this is the overall length so the next point i want to identify these uh, profiles so that when you submit this it will not it will not pull in or bring in a total confusion to the fabricators so let me come to position position numbers position numbers you can use that position numbers to identify these components so this one will only will only give me the size of the profiles but maybe those guys are, are, are interested in the profile name and uh, the total length of that particular profile now let me come to profile assembly pro, uh, assembly number tag let me just snap on that and i'll snap on that spot and just mouse over here and i'll be able to get the profile name and the total length of this uh, member so i'll do the same here right click and and do the same thing here so i'll just mouse over here and let me just uh, and, and disable the author mode and i'll place that one there right click and come to to that spot and i want to place another one here let me just zoom out and drag it somewhere here and just zoom out and place it in a, in a very convenient place and place it somewhere here and place it somewhere there perfect right click and come to that spot right click come to that spot and place another one here right click and uh, we want to place a, another one somewhere here so this one will disable the auto mode and we'll in case we'll place that one right there so you can see we have 
uh, every you can identify all this profile you can see this this uh, uh, strut is 50 by 50 by 4 millimeter thick and it is 930 millimeter so this will help a lot in the workshop by just seeing the drawing and start cutting out without any single mistake now I'll come this far end and uh, just remember this is a, a mirror image of this end. So it's always advisable so that you don't take the blame in case the fabricator makes a mistake. They can shift or throw the, bl the blame back to you if you don't indicate the same information this far end. So it, it will just force us to include the same information here it, even though it is a reputation. So as long as it is there so that it throw you off the hook in case there's a mistake done on this particular job so let me just in indicate that and bring it somewhere there let me just br bring it some somewhere there and uh, place it right there you can also select on it and try drag it drag it somewhere there so let me right click or come back here and indicate another one here indicate another one right here let me disable that and place another one right on that spot. Select there and indicate another one. Let me disable that so that this one align properly, aligns properly. I'll, I'll place another one right there. Right click and right click once again and we want to place another one here. Let me just dip, disable that and drag and place it right there. Right click or just maintain it and place another one here not accurate just undo just undo that just undo that so we'll come back here and and uh, invoke that command and we'll snap on that spot and disable this auto mode because it's it's really interfering with how with our positioning so i'll i'll, I'll, pr I'll place it right there and do another one right here disable that and try place that in that position so we'll, ha we'll have all this information available for the fabricators at the workshop so that's it so all these are available and uh, the next thing we are going to do is just to indicate or, or place the welding information so i'll come all the way to this position here to to to, to the welding section so we have all the descriptions or uh, the descriptions for our welding so we have weld all round right here so you, you can even change this to a different one so let's change this we have a fill we need a fillet weld so we need just to get rid of the, the top one and uh, we need that we need a tail here we need a tail there and uh we we'll just go ahead and click ok and indicate a, a weld right here so just drag it drag it and place it somewhere there so we have a weld so let me just get rid of this information because you don't want to uh, create a clashing information just let it be be done on workshop for uh, them to come up with the the thick the size of the welding right there let me delete that and come back to weld and uh pick on this L let me just delete this delete that 10 or we can just leave it at maybe three millimeter or six millimeter thick so let me just get, uh, come to okay and i want to indicate my welding here so i'll just drag it and place it somewhere there so just indicate that there's a weld there the weld all round fillet weld right click and repeat the same right click and repeat the same and i'll pick let me get rid of the top end and this time round we want to we want to use uh, a, 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 a field a field weld let me just indicate another one here that's not field weld we're just indicating the welding but all the details i think you can uh, change this by yourself let me just get rid of this information right there get rid of that information right there and maybe just continue placing that though the information is similar so let me jump to uh, site weld so let me let me apply site weld anywhere here 
then we get rid of that and we come to site weld here and you get site site weld right there and maybe you can put three here a six millimeter or three or six millimeter or three just get rid of that so if i click ok i'll be able to maybe indicate it somewhere there somewhere here that this is a site weld and uh, it, 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 it is basically six millimeter thick though you weld all round So this is a shop weld, this will weld on the sh at, at the workshop, this will weld at the workshop, this will weld at the workshop, this will be done on site. This this is just indication on how to apply your weld and, and the meaning of these symbols. Now the annotation settings you can come all the way to that section and click on that button here and you maybe you want to change the settings. You click on this drop down arrow in groups. We have uh, comments, we have position numbers, we have level uh, level symbols, we have marking, numbering, mark number only, part name, position number only, length, sequence, and weight. So I, I can come back to edit style, and under edit style, you can pick whatever you want and, and leave whatever you don't want. So under static, you can change all this. Grip location, you can click on the uh, click on it. It's very straightforward. So circular radius, circular radius, maybe if you're cre creating a grid line, those gr grid and labeling, you can change the sizes from here by default. So the text size also you can change. Everything you can change here. Anything annotation you can change here to match what you're trying to create on this particular drawing. So let me just close this and close that. The moment you've, my, you've done everything, just apply and click OK and everything will be applied. So under dimensions, you see all the dimension dimensioning tools are available. We have diameter dimension, we have radius dimension, all these are available. So the next thing we have level here, and this just to indicate the level, this is the level. So you can see actually from zero level, this has indicated 40 millimeter from, from the bottom end. So let me try at the at the top here and try to uh, check that level. It's 40 by default, but you have the option of changing everything. You can change and give a different level right there. Let's go to a different one and try and apply. So in this particular case, we want to generate a bill of materials. So I'll come to bill of materials and click on bill of materials and go all, all the way to continue with without locking. I'll click OK. So inside here, you'll, you'll see my file destination will be on my desktop where I'll be able to get this bill of materials once it is generated. So I'll go ahead and click save and load. So I'll click save and load. I'll click OK here. Then I'll come to click OK. So the moment I click OK, you'll see Excel loading and opening, and opening uh, the generated information. And you, you can give it some little time to, to complete that process. So in here you can see uh, all the in indications and uh, the assembly numbering and uh, the profile names and the, cut, uh, and the lengths and the weights and the total weights right there. And paint surface area, you can see the total here is 13.85 uh, square meter. And the total weight you can see is 401.4. So let's switch back to... A different information you can see the cutting list and the cutting profile you can see this it's very easy and very direct and uh, straightforward information if you submit this to, to the workshop and this how simple and very in interesting uh, para build is so let me just minimize this and uh, switch back to a different one and let me pick on that so in here you can see we have this the positions PR1 PR2 though they have, they have been, it, it has been it hasn't been indicated there but you can trace your way through uh, these dimensions so let me just minimize this and switch back to para build window so this is how it's done and this is just a, a, a slight uh, overview of how uh, para build uh, uh, steel detailing works though there are more and more advanced uh, tutorials that will come along on parabill steel detailing so this is another tool that you should consider uh, um, consider in uh, including in your toolkit in your design office and try them out
thanks a lot for watching this video and i'm morris dimba let's meet then bye, -bye.